You want to create realistic drawings with your colored pencil, but you're not sure which brand to choose? I'm going to help you out a bit with that today and my full colored pencil supply list. Quick disclaimer before anyone gets mad at me about me not liking the same supplies as you. It's okay if we don't like the same thing. I don't know why people get so mad. What is important to you and what you're looking for in a colored pencil may just not be what I'm looking for. You have to keep in mind, I am a professional artist. I need to be able to sell my artwork, so it's very important that my work be light fast. Now you may be thinking, but Lisa, you use Derwent ink tents and those aren't all light fast. Your work's even on the tin. Shameless brag. Yes, but with Derwent ink tents, that's a very fast medium to work in, so I can get a drawing done, a complete painting done in a day or two. Whereas with colored pencil, that may take two weeks or more. So with colored pencil, it just not worth it for me to put that level of time into a piece if I can't sell it. With ink tents, I can just sell the prints and I'm perfectly happy with that. Why does light fast matter if you're selling your work? If I sell something and it fades in a few years, the person who spent hundreds or thousands of dollars on my work is not going to be happy with me and that's not fair to them even if I was okay with being shady. That's just a very, very big deal to me. The next thing I'm looking for is good color saturation. I want my pencils to be able to layer very well. Some brands are a bit too waxy or they have too much almost filler in them. I don't know how to word that, but you can't get a lot of layers with them. I want a pencil that I'm able to get a lot of layers, great color saturation, and I want it to be very blendable. I want to have my end result look more like a painting than a colored pencil sketch. Does that mean that the sketchy look is bad? No, it's personal preference. So again, you've got to decide what you're looking for in a pencil. Before we get too far into the pencils, I do want to explain a little bit about wax versus oil based. In reality, all of these pencils are a combination of wax, oil, clay, all kinds of different ingredients. So when I'm talking about something being oil-based, that doesn't mean that it doesn't have all the other ingredients. Those pencils just tend to have a little bit more oil or a little bit more wax, which changes how it performs. So an oil-based pencil, it's typically going to have a harder lead and is more translucent, whereas a pencil that is higher in wax content typically is going to have a softer lead and be more opaque. Which is better? Depends on what you're doing. If I'm drawing a portrait, or I'm trying to get a really out of focus background where I want really smooth blending, I like my wax base better. But when I want super fine detail or if I'm doing a glazing technique, then I want my oil-based pencil, something that is a harder lead, can hold a finer point and get that really tiny detail. These are in no particular order, by the way. First on my list is the Faber-Castell Polychromos. These are listed as an oil-based pencil and in practice, I would say they have the highest oil content or at least that's how they perform, I don't know the actual like formula in these, but they are the most translucent and they have the hardest lead. So I can get the finest point on these. Seriously, look how long and fine of a point I can get on that. If you manage to break a polychromos, you deserve a reward because it's kind of hard to do. Whereas something that is a higher wax based pencil, I'm typically not going to sharpen in focus. There we go. I'm not going to sharpen it quite as long because they're more prone to breaking. The polychromos set that I have has 120 colors. I only had to pull a few of the colors out of the set that were not light fast. If I'm going to be blending with powder blender, these are the only pencil that I use for my base layers. These blend so well with powder blender. They blend really well with odorless mineral spirits as well, but with when I'm using powder blender, these hands down the best pencil for that product. And I'll explain what I mean by powder blender later in this video. Gotta keep you on your toes, I gotta be confusing. Next on my list are the Derwent Light Fast Pencils. You can get these pencils in a hundred colors. These are listed as an oil base, but in practice they feel like such a good combination of wax and oil. I feel like I'm getting the best of both worlds with this pencil. You can sharpen them to a very fine point. They are going to be more likely to break if you add too much pressure than say the harder polychromos lead, but these ones blend really well. I can be so sloppy and sketchy and have harsh lines going all over the place when I'm blending and working with these. And when I go over it with odorless mineral spirits, it blends out like I was actually careful in doing my job properly. They're amazing. They're very forgiving, I would say. Whereas with the polychromos, I have to actually pay attention to what I'm doing and work in small ovals or circles when I to get that really smooth blending the way that I layer. I guess the summary of that is I can be sloppy and lazy with these. These pencils are fairly opaque, so if you want heavier coverage, they're great there. They have the absolute best purples of any brand when it comes to light fast colored pencils. There is no other purple quite as good. Their nightshade and violet are two absolute must haves for me. They also have a magenta that is beautiful. I'll put a list of my must haves. If you're only gonna try a few, at least get these colors. I'll put a link to that and everything I'm talking about in today's video will be in the video description. Next on my list are the Caran d'Ache Luminance. These are also all light fast. Did I mention that the Derwent Light Fast were all light fast? 
I don't know if I did, but they are. The Karen Dush Luminance are also all light fast. These pencils now come with 100 colors. I have not tried the newer colors, so I can't talk about that yet. I need to buy some so I can do a review on that soon. But they are a wax-based pencil. They blend out beautifully. I typically blend them with odorless mineral spirits. They work great for burnishing as well. Now, the last on my list, I consider to be more of an add-on pencil. It's not a standalone, only because it just comes with 24 colors, which is so disappointing because I love these. These are the waxiest, softest of my pencils, so very very buttery feeling to work with. These are the Derwent drawing pencils. These are my most opaque colors. I'm going to use these more for really out of focus backgrounds or portraits for skin where you want it really smooth. They're so great for that. But there's only 24 colors. Seriously, Derwent, if you're watching this, I will sell you my leg or do the artwork on the tin for free. Like, what do we need to do to get more colors of these? Because I love the Derwent drawing pencils. We just need more colors. You might be thinking, okay, of those pencils, which is the best? This is gonna sound like a cop-out, but I'm not kidding when I say this. You're not gonna be unhappy with any of these. Derwent Drawing, we're counting that as a standalone, but as far as the Caran d'Ache Luminance, the Faber-Castell Polychromos, or the Derwent Lightfast, you will not be unhappy with any of those brands. They're amazing. I use all of them together when I work. They blend well together, they layer well together. And I'm sure you're thinking, wow, those pencils are not cheap. No, but you can get started with a small set. If you go online, you're gonna see a lot of places on Amazon like they have that cheap Chinese art products that you can get there. You can get a ton of colors for a very small amount of money compared to quality pencils. I don't recommend them. I would much rather you have 12 quality pencils than 100 crap pencils. Husband, do you want all these comic books? Uh, worthless. Worthless. Yeah. None of these are worth anything. For this one. I'll take this one. Now, the other thing I do want to point out, because a lot of the pencils on Amazon, the ones out of China, say excellent light fastness or excellent light fast qualities. They didn't test them. I know, I contacted the companies. None of them did actual light fast testing. It's just a claim that they put on the label, kind of like where brands are like putting HD on everything. And I'm like, I don't think you, that means what you think it means. That is just a word that gets thrown around a lot. But they didn't actually do testing. If a company cannot tell you what the blue wool or ASTM ratings are on their pencils, they didn't do any testing or they didn't do testing that would be worthy of your consideration. So that's definitely something to keep in mind. Don't fall for that. It's very scammy the way they do that. I, I'm not a fan. The other thing is just the performance of the pencil. You're going to learn more about blending and layering pencils if you are using a quality brand. I did a video not long ago where I only used 12 pencils. 11 of them were the polychromos from the set of 12 and then one opaque white pencil. I had no trouble blending the colors I needed from that. And that brings me on to my next point. We often get these huge set of pencils and that gets very overwhelming. Which yellow do I choose? There's 10 of them. Why are there 10 yellows? No one needs to. Anyway, you may be confused about which pencil, which yellow, which green, which if you've only got one green, one blue, one yellow, one red to choose from, you're going to figure out how to get the tone you want by mixing and layering. And you are going to learn so much more about blending and layering and mixing color that way than you would if you're, you've got this huge set that just gets confusing. So even if you have the, few, the huge set, I'd still recommend pull just a handful of colors to work with for each project as you learn to mix and blend color. So you can save a lot of money to get started, get quality pencils, just get a smaller amount of them. Now I'm gonna talk about the pencils that did not make the cut here at the end of the video. But first, let's talk about the rest of the art supplies that I use. Paper. There is a brand of paper called colored pencil paper. Don't waste your money, it's terrible. I hate that, that stuff was just, it's not good. For me, my go-to paper is going to be Arches Hot Press Watercolor Paper. I also really like the Canson Me 10s, the gray tone. There's a very low cost paper by Strathmore that I do like, not their colored pencil paper, but their regular drawing paper. It's thin, it's lightweight, but if you're just getting started, it's got good tooth. It takes the paper or the pigment really, really well. So that's an option for you if you're just testing stuff out. It's not as thick. You have to be careful not to rip it, but I really do like the tooth on that paper. For the erasers, my must have is the Faber-Castell Perfection Eraser. This is almost like an ink eraser. It lifts pigments so well because it's a bit more rough than let's say the Tombow Mono Eraser or something that I might use for graphite. This will lift so much of that pigment so you can get more pigment over that area. It is just hands down the best eraser for colored pencil. Glassine is another thing that I really like. This is what I keep under my hand so that I don't get the oils from my skin. People oils, as it turns out, not archival. So we wanna keep that off our work as much as possible. So Glassine, I put under my hand and this protects my work. Glassine is acid-free or pH neutral, so this is something that can touch your work long-term. 
without causing any issues. I use a pH neutral masking tape. It's a black tape that I tape my artwork down to my drawing board and then of course a drawing board itself. This keeps my work from sliding around all over the place. There are two methods that I typically use for blending. One, well, one is technically two methods. I'm bad at math. This is blending with odorless mineral spirits and then when I get to my final layers, I'll start burnishing a little where I'm pushing harder with the pencil. But my initial layers are done by using odorless mineral spirits. I use either Mona Lisa odorless or Gamsol. I have a video going over blending techniques. I'll put a link to that in the video description. The next method I use for blending is using Powder Blender from brushandpencil.com. This is going to make the pencils behave a little bit more like a soft pastel, but without all of the mess of soft pastel. I personally love the look of pastels, the feel of it on my hands. It freaks me out. I just, I can't do it. I have issues, I'm aware, but this is an, a great alternative so I can get that great pastel look without actually using pastels. If I'm gonna be blending with powder blender, sanded paper is my go-to here, and that is the Lux Archival, also from Brush and Pencil. This is the only sanded paper that is archival or acid-free front and back. Other brands that claim that they're archival or that they're acid-free, they forgot to mention that that doesn't, not on the back, the backs are not. It's a little shady, isn't it? But the Lux Archival is so, again, because I sell my work, that matters. So I am really fancy when it comes to pencil sharpeners. My go-to are the Coom Little Metal handheld sharpener. I will use the wide side for pencils like my Derwent drawing pencil, which not only is a thicker lead anyway, but this is gonna give me that not quite as long of a point, so it's not as prone to breaking. But I use this guy or my fine point sharpener. This one I typically reserve for my polychromos because it can handle a super fine point. And man, can this give you like, seriously, look at how sharp that is. Now these don't last forever. You're gonna need to change the blades or replace the sharpener every so often. When your pencils, if you get to where you start breaking them, especially if it's a pencil like the Derwent Lightfast or the Polychromos that aren't really prone to breaking that easily, they start breaking when you sharpen them, you need to, to replace the blade. You want that to be nice and sharp. The slice tool is also an amazing tool for colored pencil. This is going to be a way that you can scrape away your top layers, exposing bottom layers for fine, fine details. This is really nice if you're doing little things like tiny little hairs. Touch up texture and titanium white mixture from Brush and Pencil. This product changed everything for me with how I work in colored pencil because now I can get my brightest highlights. I used to have to work in the reverse where I kept the white of the paper showing. Now I can be sloppy and messy and know that I can get those bright highlights right on top. Now you might be thinking, well, can't I just use a gel pen or acrylic paint? No, those are not archival. We are dealing with wax and oil-based pencils. Wax, oil, and water, they don't mix. We don't wanna use a water-based product on top of those. So instead, we can use this product that is made specifically for colored pencil. It is archival, it's going to stick long-term, and this is the only one that I recommend for getting those brighter highlights when you're working with colored pencil, when you wanna make sure that it's going to be archival and that your work will last. For pencil extenders, when your pencils get used up, the Derwent pencil extenders are my favorite. These are the most comfortable that i found to use, and it comes in a two-pack. One fits the thicker pencils, like the Caran d'Ache Luminance, really well, and then the other other will hold your thinner lead like the Derwent Lightfast or the Polychromos pencils. Now the two pencil brands that did not make the cut here that you may be wondering about are Prismacolor and Holbein. So my issue with Prismacolor, they're not all Lightfast. My biggest problem with the Prismacolor, even if I were to just be okay with using their Lightfast colors, is that their quality control is just horrible. It used to be great, they sold out, they started making all of their products in another country and now they are just, they're just, it, it, they're bad. So they are a wax-based pencil, which means they're going to be more brittle. That's fine. I expect that to be, to be more prone to breaking. The problem is that they're not consistently centering their pencils. You may get a set and have no problems. So some people are confused. They're like, but my pencils have never broken. You got a good set. You got lucky. I'm happy for you. But not all of us are that lucky. It is so hit or miss. And my sample size of how many Prismacolors I've used over the years is huge. I've been, I've been doing this for a very long time. When I'm working with my pencils, I do not have time to deal with a pencil that continuously breaks all the way down because it the lead wasn't centered or the wood casing was bad and kept splitting. And I know that there are solutions where you can, if a lead kept breaking inside, you can try putting it in the microwave or in the oven. I've no, there, I know the tricks. I am aware of them. Can you give me some ice wire up? Yeah. What's the knife for? You'll see. Mother What's wrong with this cup? That's what the knife's for. Why? To make the cup sit straight. Well, why am I using a defective cup? It was cheaper than the good ones. Here's the thing. How many hoops should I have to jump through to get my art supplies to do what they're supposed to do? I don't have time for that. I just need them to do, it's a pencil. 
like none of my other pencils have this problem. It's only a Prismacolor issue. So there's just, for me, it's not even worth the trouble. The other is Holbein. Holbein, I made a full review. That video will also be in the description. That video, I shared exactly what happened with that company, but I contacted them about their questionable light mass ratings. Their answers were just not acceptable as far as I'm concerned, and I really was not impressed with how they treated somebody who they thought was just a regular customer. Now, I know of artists who were making videos and Holbein knew they were making a video and they treated them very, very differently than they treated me. So, that is, um, I don't know, that says something to me about that company. And I don't, I just, no, I won't, I won't give them more money. The other issue with Holbein is even if you were to take their word for what they claim their light fast ratings are, independent tests have been done. And these independent tests, when they tested against other brands and what they claim their light fast ratings were, very similar. There were very few instances where they didn't match up pretty close. Holbein's was kind of all over the place, not matching up with an independent tester. Normally I go, I, I trust the, the brand themselves more, but with theirs, theirs was the one that was kind of all over the place. And it just, that combined with the fact that they don't use ASTM or Blue Wool, which is the industry standard, I just, I have enough questions that I don't trust professional work that I am selling with their brand. And then again, with how they treated me when they thought I was just a customer and not someone making a video. So I won't personally spend the money. And theirs is one of the most expensive color pencils. So I just, to me, it's not worth it. Why would I spend that when so many of their pencils appear to not be light fast? Now, what if you own Holbein or Prismacolor? Should you not use them? No, enjoy your pencils. I'm not saying that you can't create stunning, amazing, beautiful work with those pencils. You absolutely can. I have, I've used them both. I used Prismacolor for years before I switched to other brands. I didn't know there was a bigger world out there at the time, but I created work I loved with the Prismacolor and I created work that I love, well, one piece, I, I will only do the one with the Holbein. I don't want you to feel like you shouldn't enjoy or be excited or happy about whatever art supplies you have. Use what you have, love what you have, but when you get to the point where you're doing replacements, you may want to try some of these other brands and see if they're a better fit for you. If you want to watch some of my longer art lessons, like some of the clips that you saw here in this video, head over to patreon.com where for as little as $4 a month, you get access to all of my longer lessons. I've been making lessons there for over seven years, which means you get instant access to over 300 videos as soon as you sign up. 300. $4 a month. That's a lot. If you would like to see what I have in my Patreon video library, head over to my website, lawcree.com. That link is in the video description where you can see a listing of all of the lessons that are available. Did you enjoy this video? I think you'll like this one with more art information.